Hey everyone, it's Mr. Renee, the OT. So today I wanted to talk about beginning of the year scheduling for school-based therapists. Now, as school-based therapists, I'm sure we all know beginning of the year scheduling can be super tricky. And I just wanted to share the method that I use that has worked out best for me. I have experience working in brick and mortar and teletherapy settings. When I was working in brick and mortar locations, I was traveling between multiple schools. And currently in teletherapy, I'm also working with different schools. So I really need a schedule that is organized and easy for me to follow. So I'm just going to give you a quick overview of the method that I use. If you have another method that works better for you, please feel free to share that in the comments. I would love to hear about it. You can take bits and pieces. You can modify the ideas that I present to you here, whatever works out best for you. I just want to help others because I know that scheduling is not the most fun thing to do and it can be really tricky sometimes. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, so this is basically what my schedule looks like. Just a side note, this is not a real schedule, so all of the names on this schedule are fictional. I created this example solely for learning purposes. So this schedule was actually created on Microsoft Word. I found that this works out the best for me, but you can also create your schedule on Google Docs or Excel, whatever works out best for you. So I personally have students in multiple schools and what has worked out best for me is color coding each student depending on what school they go to. It helps with general organization and it also helps for documentation purposes. So as you can see down here, I have a little key for the different types of schools. Again, these are fictional school names. So Happy Elementary School is Aqua, Sunny Elementary School is Pink, and then Happy High School is Green. And then you can see up here that all of my students are color coded depending on what school they go to. So one of the first tips that I would recommend is that you do not schedule your students back to back if you can help it. I personally plug in about 15 minutes of note and prep time. So in a brick and mortar school, this could be really helpful because sometimes when you're dropping off a student or picking up a student, a teacher will wanna bring you to the side and ask you a quick question, or maybe you need to consult with a teacher. Same thing in teletherapy. Sometimes you wanna consult with the parents before or after a session, and it also gives you some time to get your notes done. Now, I know some school policies are different, and in some schools, you're only allowed a certain amount of prep and lunch time to spread out throughout the week, so it really depends on how much flexibility you have. Luckily, I do have a lot of flexibility, and this has worked out really great for me. So not only do I see students virtually, but I also see some students face-to-face, -face, depending on their needs. And as you can see down here, I have plugged in travel time for my fictional student, Molly. And one thing I could say, if you are traveling to see your students, or even traveling in between schools, if you're in a district, I would recommend doubling your travel time if you can. So that would mean if it takes you 10 minutes to travel to a student, I would block out a 20 minute block just in case there's traffic, in case there's a road closure to give you time to prep your materials and pack your materials up and also to consult with parents or guardians. Or also there were times where I have ended a session a little bit late and was running a little bit late and I had a little bit of a buffer during that travel time. Again, this all depends on how much flexibility you have in your schedule. Now, another really important thing to remember is to block out evaluation time. So I personally block out time in the morning and the afternoon to give the parents or guardians a choice. And I personally block out about two hours of actual evaluation time, which would account for preparation time, the actual evaluation time and maybe even scoring up the evaluation after some evaluations are more involved than others so it really depends my evaluation time does not include travel time so that would be separate as you can see down here I've blocked out travel time and then I have my two hours of blocked evaluation time so I actually used to have a paper schedule, a hard copy of a schedule when I worked in the brick and mortar location. And I found out that having a hard copy schedule did not work out for me because your schedule is constantly changing, especially if you have different IEP meetings, you have to move a student around, or maybe you have to move your student around to a different therapy time because they have a test that they have to complete. So I found that it was easy for me to just erase a student. Let's say we want to switch students. We're going to switch 
Dominic and James here, and then I would just change the color, and they flip-flopped. And also, if I have any open time in my schedule, I leave those boxes bright yellow so they're easily seen in case I need to add a student onto my caseload. So again, I just used Microsoft Word to create this schedule. Basically, all I did was use the table tool where you click insert table and then you can click the amount of rows and columns you want for that table. And then I put the therapy time, the amount of minutes each session is. So as you can see here, Sophia is 30 minutes. Uh, let's see down here, Ava is 60 minutes, Owen is 45 minutes, so that really helps too. And then you could see what time the session runs from and to. That's very, very helpful, especially if your schedule is changing day by day. <laughs> and to create the boxes down here, I just inserted a shape, and then you could fill that shape with a certain color. And then I just entered a text box down here to create my little key. And then to color code the boxes, all you have to do is press this little paint bucket here for shading, and then you can add whatever color you want for those boxes. So that's basically all there is to it. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to comment on this video. And also let me know what strategies you use to help with scheduling.